So hello everyone. Uh, let's talk about our next topic. So we have previously uh, talked about the uh, helix turn, helix motifs, helix loop, helix uh, motifs, and today we are going to talk about the zinc finger motifs. So there are basically uh, two classes that we are going to talk about here. Um, one is C2H2 zinc finger uh, proteins and the second one is C4 zinc finger proteins. As far as C2H2 zinc, zinc finger proteins are concerned, they are the most common DNA binding motifs in human genome and uh, in the genome of uh, lots of other multicellular uh, organisms. Um, uh, they're also common in multicellular plants, uh, but they're not as dominant in plants as uh, they are in animals. So this motif basically consists of uh, <clears throat> uh, this motif basically consists of roughly uh, 23 to 26 residues, and also contains an alpha helix. Uh, the, what what is important here? Uh, these proteins were called as zinc finger motifs because of because their 2D structure resembled uh, uh, it resembled a human finger so uh, these proteins could fold themselves uh, these 20 these 26 amino acids could fold themselves into finger like structures and these fingers can penetrate themselves into the major grooves of the DNA and can interact with the uh, nitrogenous bases in the uh, DNA so what is important here is in, in, in case of C2H2 zinc finger proteins, uh, we call them C2H2 zinc finger proteins because uh, they have two conserved cysteine residues and two conserved histidine residues in this structure. And these residues are important because uh, uh, they have got a zinc ion in the center that they can, uh, that they're connected to. So a binding of uh, these two cysteine residues and two histidine residues uh, basically leads to the formation of this uh, compact domain uh, which also contains this alpha helix and this alpha helix can uh, insert itself into the DNA and can, uh, can and can interact with the DNA when the protein wraps itself uh, around the DNA and generally uh, there's a short uh, uh, linker peptide between uh, these uh, zinc finger modules uh, so these C2H2 zinc finger proteins uh, they can have uh, three or more of these uh, um, of these uh, zinc fingers uh, and with the help of these zinc fingers they can uh, interact with the DNA they can insert these fingers into the DNA and then make a bond uh, with it the second type here is the C2 sorry is the uh, C4 uh, zinc finger proteins so uh, they're generally found in 50% of the human transcription factors they were also previously uh, known as uh, uh, the intracellular uh, the specific intracellular high affinity binding proteins or receptors for steroid hormones uh, and that was the reason that they were considered as uh, 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 they were considered a part of steroid superfamily uh, but later it was discovered that some um, uh, intracellular receptors are also uh, present uh, which can bind to the non steroid hormones and then they were later uh, named as uh, nuclear receptors. So what is different in C4 uh, zinc finger proteins? Uh, first of all, uh, this module consists of 55 or 50 six residues instead of like 23 or 26 residues for the C2 H2 zinc finger proteins so that appears to be a bit larger than the C2 H2 zinc finger proteins here in this case there are uh, rather than two cysteine and two histidine, histidine residues there are four uh, 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 there are four cysteine residues which can uh, interact with the uh, central uh, zinc atom and lead to the formation of this uh, finger-like structure. So uh, because there are uh, four uh, cysteine residues in it, so that's why they're known as C4 uh, zinc finger proteins. So um, the, the, these proteins, they have the important difference between the two uh, 
uh, classes that is uh, C2H2 zinc finger proteins and C4 zinc finger proteins is that these C2H2 zinc finger proteins they generally have three or more of these finger like structures or these zinc finger domains and they bind with the DNA as monomers while C4 zinc finger proteins they generally contain two finger units like this one and they can bind to the DNA uh, either as homodimers or heterodimers so here's an example of uh, two different proteins one is a GL1 and the second one is glucocorticoid receptor um, uh, GL1 is a proto-oncogene so if something means something goes wrong if something goes wrong with this uh, protein then it may lead to the development of uh, cancer uh, while the glucocorticoid receptor it's it's an intracellular receptor we have previously uh, I hope you remember from your cell biology cl class that we talked about some intracellular receptors and generally for the steroid um, uh, they work for the steroid, steroid hormones so the, stero the steroid hormones can uh, cross the cell membrane and then enter into the cytoplasm where they can bind to these glucocorticoid receptors and the entire complex then translocates to the nucleus and then binds to the DNA so here are these two examples let's look at the first example it is uh, GL1 it's a monomeric protein so it is not going to have uh, so this is just one monomer which can, consists of one, two, three, four, and five um, helices. So the cylinders here indicate helices, and the black spheres they indicate the uh, the zinc ions. And as you can see, they have five fingers. This protein has got five C two H two zinc finger uh, zinc fingers or C two H two fingers. This finger one, this finger two, finger three, finger four, finger five. So with the exception of finger one, the other four fingers are interacting with the DNA in different regions of the DNA. So that gives the protein uh, a stability or, or it, it helps the protein firmly bind to the DNA. Um, so for, 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 for a stronger binding, uh, there are more than one of these uh, fingers which which can insert themselves into the major grooves of the DNA and can bind to the DNA uh, while in case of a glucocorticoid receptor as you can see this is one monomer and this is a second monomer so this protein is going to bind to the DNA as a dimer the only difference here perhaps is the orientation as you can see the amino end um, in this case here while in case it's on the opposite side um, so the 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 these are the alpha helices the ribbon like uh, structures and uh, the green arrows they indicate the strands uh, while the black spheres they uh, indicate the uh, zinc atoms so uh, there are two fingers so there are two alpha helices this this one alpha helix and this is the second alpha helix so this uh, uh, alpha helix which can which is associated with the uh, uh, with the zinc atom so this is basically the zinc finger protein this is the, or this is the zinc finger of the protein so this finger is going to get itself inserted into the major groove of the DNA and can interact with the DNA and again here we have this recognition helix this is also a zinc finger and uh, because it is associated with the uh, zinc uh, with the zinc ion so this uh, alpha helix can insert in itself into the major groove of the DNA and then bind uh, to the DNA so uh, I think that's pretty pretty much clear uh, so uh, let's see how do these uh, proteins bind to the DNA so that might also answer some of the uh, questions of uh, the students uh, they asked in the previous lectures uh, let's look at this example first and then we will get back to the questions so here are three different proteins, uh, TTK uh, uh, protein, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a protein uh, found in Drosophila uh, which functions in the development and there are two mouse proteins, uh, uh, here's an example of mouse protein, uh, ZIF268 and here's an example of uh, GL1 that we just discussed, uh, we talked about. So these are two fingers, uh, two different fingers shown from each protein from TTK this is finger one finger two and this is from uh, uh, ZIF 
finger one and finger two and these are two fingers of uh, gl1 let's see how do they bind to it so as we can see um, uh, the numbers here indicate the uh, amino acids which uh, constitute or which uh, uh, which form the uh, alpha helix of the zinc finger so this is the entire zinc finger that's the amino and then this is the carboxylic end and as you can see there are two cysteine residues and two histidine residues so these are uh, we know that these are c2h2 uh, zinc finger proteins so if this protein if this protein ttk contains uh, two fingers this this is the first finger then this is the second finger and as you, you can see the uh, in the alpha helix so the 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 uh, cysteine and histidine residues they're conserved while the uh, amino acid sequence in the alpha helix so that's what is being indicated by the numbers here so the alpha, the, the uh, amino acid sequence in the alpha helix is uh, different in both of these two fingers so it means the first finger is going to recognize a different dna sequence while the second finger is going to recognize uh, an entirely different sequence uh, the same is true for uh, uh, ZIF uh, fingers so this is the first finger this is the second finger this is the alpha helix of the first finger and this is the alpha helix of the second finger and as we, we can see the amino acid sequence is quite different from each other and that's the reason they're also recognize, going to recognize an entirely different uh, DNA sequence so this indicates your DNA and these are two anti parallel strands 5 prime to 3 prime and 5 prime to uh, 3 prime and the same is true for uh, GL1 finger as well that the uh, sequence of amino acids in both of these two fingers is quite different uh, from each other and that's the reason that these fingers are going to recognize an entirely uh, different uh, DNA sequence so what is interesting here um, uh, let's let's look at some uh, questions from uh, Sirat and Ammon. So uh, Sirat asked uh, asked a question in one of the previous lectures. Uh, does the DNA binding domain of a protein interact only with nitrogenous base of one nucleotide or with both of the nitrogenous bases in a base pair? So if we talk about the DNA binding domain, so this is the entire domain, and obviously, as you can see, it is going to interact with the nitrogenous bases in both the strands and even so there was another uh, question please uh, uh, plus do some sort of interactions also occur between ad adjacent nitrogenous bases so you can see uh, these are adjacent nitrogenous bases and this is uh, the uh, the interaction with the nitrogen spaces on both sides so this is in one strand c and g is on the opposite side so um, the the uh, the the amino acids in the protein they they have the ability to interact with the uh, nucleotides um, on, on uh, with, 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 bo with both the nucleotides in this um, pair and here's an example of the adjacent and this one as well and this one as well uh, they do interact with the adjacent uh, um, nitrogenous bases but there is also um, evidence we see that uh, some of the uh, some of the nitrogenous uh, bases or some of the base pairs can also be uh, left uh, in between without any interaction uh, with the protein so the protein can interact with um, one amino acid uh, sorry the, the protein can uh, the, the amino acids can interact with the uh, with one nitrogen space and leave the other one and then interact with another one so that entirely depends upon the sequence of the uh, of the amino acids in the in this alpha helix and then the uh, uh, the 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 nitrogenous bases on the other side in the in the DNA that this protein is interacting with. Uh, and then M asked a question, sir. You said that sequence of DNA nucleotides must match the sequence of protein amino acids. How these sequences complement with each other? As there are twenty one different amino acids and four types of nitrogenous bases. So that's an interesting question. Uh, so as you can see. Most of the times we see that uh, it's, um, if you look at uh, uh, guanine, it is going to interact with uh, arginine here. Again here, it's arginine here, here again, arginine here, 
here again arginine here this is also arginine so guanine is interacting with arginine but we also have um, instances where uh, uh, guanine can interact for example with serine here so guanine a nitrogenous base is interacting with serine or it is being recognized by serine and here in this case for example by uh, by, by, by a histidine or lysine so uh, here's here's an example of histidine and here's an example of lysine so one nitrogenous base can be recognized by more than uh, one type of amino acids and this is a good example here uh, guanine guanine is being uh, recognized by uh, arginine uh, by histidine and also by uh, by, by, by lysine so uh, different types of amino acids are going to recognize uh, guanine while on the other hand if we see this is also interesting uh, if you if you look for serine here serine can has the ability it, it is going to interact with guanine here while in this case it is going to interact with adenine and again here serine is going to interact with thiamine so uh, this is it appears to be a very complex um, interaction but what we learned from 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 this example is that uh, uh, not all the amino acids in the alpha helix are going to interact with the with, with the dna uh, with the nitrogen spaces in the dna and uh, number two um, one nitrogen space uh, can be recognized by more than one type of amino acids and one amino acid on the other hand can interact with more than one type of nitrogenous bases and they can uh, interact with the uh, with with the, the, the these uh, proteins uh, the dna binding uh, proteins they are the dna binding domains that can they can interact with the uh, with the nitrogenous bases um, with, with with both the nitrogenous bases of the pair and they can also interact with the uh, adjacent uh, uh, nucleotides or they can if they wish to do so they can also leave uh, blank in between so I hope that answers all of your uh, questions and all of your previous questions I think it's pretty much clear from this example so we will uh, study the next uh, we, we will discuss the next topic tomorrow hopefully uh, uh, all, you got everything and you also got the answers to your questions so if you have any other questions uh, related to this topic do post them on your uh, uh, on your uh, classroom in your classroom and I will try to answer these uh, questions thank you very much